betters NFL week number eight our picks and predictions for our five top plays of week number eight before we get started welcome in glad you could be with us as we give you our top five plays of NFL week eight make sure you hit that subscribe button you don't want to miss any of our free plays throughout the week not only in NFL college football Premier League all across the board all sports we have it all the time hit subscribe and don't miss out but without further ado let's get in to our top five picks of week number eight so our first pick is going to be between the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings and uh, because it's uh, first on our slate, I thought I would throw the beanie on. It's being played in Lambeau Field, and I don't know if you know this, but the calendar just turned. It's November 1st, and it's a little cold outside. So uh, look for those Vikings to have a hard time in Lambeau Field. The Packers are 5-1. and one, The Vikings are 1-5. and five. Uh, Green Bay's coming off a great win against the Texans, 35-20. to The score is not as close as the game was. The Texans scored late in that game to make it a 15-point game. Um, Green Bay was never in doubt. Uh, they covered the spread. That was one of our picks last week, and uh, it came through as an easy winner. There are a couple injuries on the Packers' side. Uh, Aaron Jones is going to be out, but Jamal Williams is a reliable backup. This guy plays hard, and he had 114 uh, scrimmage yards last week. We look for him to do the same against the Vikings. On the flip side, Minnesota, uh, Delvin Cook is out this week. They had a bye last week. You thought that he might be healthy. Um, there is a chance he could be a game-time decision. Um, and if he doesn't start, Madison will probably go again. He was awful two weeks ago with Delvin Cook out. Um, if Delvin Cook does go, it really doesn't change our play at all. Um, and our play for this game is going to be the Packers minus six. Aaron Rodgers is just having an unbelievable season. This guy has Super Bowl written on his uh, mirror at home and is probably looking at it every day. He probably wants one more Super Bowl before he hangs it up in the NFL. Like I said, Jamal Williams is such a better back than Madison if we're comparing backups that might have to take the, um, the ball to start in week number eight. The Minnesota Vikings, uh, they lost to the Falcons two weeks ago before their bye week. They were down 30-7 to at the end of the third quarter. Um, the small gleaming light is the Vikings have Jefferson, a new wide receiver rookie. He looks great. Looks like he's going to be a pro for a long time. Um, but I like the, uh, the Packers, their offense, and um, their mild defense to tame the uh, Minnesota Vikings as they come into Lambeau. So, again, Packers minus six. All right, play number two is going to be between two teams that are on a downward, downward spiral. You have the New England Patriots against the Buffalo Bills. Now, the Patriots are two and four. They've lost three straight. First time, I think, in 20 years for the Patriots, at least maybe since Belichick took the reins there in New England. On the flip side, Buffalo is five and two. Now that you might say, how are they on the downside? Their offense can't do anything right now. Um, they did not look good. They played against the uh, Rams last time out. Um, and just did not have a good outing. You have the Patriots who got destroyed by San Francisco. Um, that wasn't good. Cam Newton got benched in that game, uh, which is very surprising. And then Stidham came in and threw more interceptions. Um, so both these offenses don't look good. Um, I'm sorry, the Bills actually, they played the Jets and did win last week. But uh, prior to that, they did not have a good performance. Um, but speaking about bad offensively, the Bills only scored 18 points last week against the Jets, and they were all field goals. Um, now, a couple couple injuries in this game. you got Josh Norman, who's out uh, as a cornerback for the Bills. Um, Edelman's out. Uh, wide receiver Neil Harry's out. And um, you have 11 of the Patriots that are questionable for the game. So there's a lot of injuries and a lot that goes with this. Um, the over is set at 41, and I think that's because the bookmakers have seen these offenses recently, 
and they don't like how the offenses are going. The Patriots, though, Cam Newton, he's not going to get benched again. This guy is going to make something happen uh, with his legs or with his arm. He's going to make sure they put points on the board this week. And the Bills, on the other hand, don't have a rushing uh, game at all. These guys cannot rush the ball. So Josh Allen is going to throw a ton, probably about 50 passes in this game. So it's going to be an all-out air attack. And for 41 points, it's a very low total when it's going to be a ton of passing and Cam Newton running a lot. So we like... Pats and Bills over 41. In our third play of week number eight, uh, we have the Detroit Lions and the Indianapolis Colts. And this is an intriguing matchup. The Detroit Lions are coming off a last-minute victory over the Falcons. Now, how many times have we said that this year? Last-minute victory over the Falcons. Everybody has done it, including the Cowboys, who are just downright awful. Uh, on the flip side, Indianapolis had a bye week last week. So the Lions come in at 3-3. Three and three. The Colts also have a winning, uh, are coming in at a winning record. Now, the Colts, on one hand, have played the Jags, the Jets, the Browns, the Bengals, and the Vikings. All of those teams combined for 8-25-1 and 25 and one over the season. So they haven't given up a ton of points in their wins. They look pretty good, but is their defense for real? These guys haven't played anybody. They did play the Bears, um, which is five and two, a 5-2 and two team, and they're a good team. But I don't know if the Colts' defense is for real or the schedule has just allowed them to uh, look like they're a great defense. Um, the Lions, on the other hand, Stafford... Uh, he's throwing it out. He's airing it out more since the bye week. Uh, he had a great outing against Atlanta last week. 359 yards he threw for. Uh, that's just amazing. Um, now, there's a couple injuries that I am concerned about. You have tight end for the Colts, um, uh, Allie Cox. He is questionable. And the cornerback, Trufant, for the Lions is going to be questionable, probably out in this. Um, and I'm con more concerned with the Trufant. Uh, injury because the Colts and Phillip Rivers I know have a passing attack. They haven't really quite got it together on the ground, um, but their passing attack's great. And if Trufant's out, that might open up some seams in the defense. Now, we are going to probably go against the grain here, and we're going to take the Detroit Lions on the money line straight up to win. Um, I think it was at plus money or very close to a pick em. Um, when it came uh, right out when we when we grabbed the line. I think we got them at maybe uh, plus 104, 105, something like that. So Detroit on the money line is going to be our play. The Lions, they, they're something to reckon with. And because they're 3-3 three and three and they got that win last week, they're kind of thinking playoffs, which is going to be hard with the Packers and the Bears in that division. But I think that the Lions, if they put... They're hard into it. Could grab that last wild card in that crappy NFC. So we'll see. So again, the Lions on the money line over the Colts. Number four of week number eight is going to be a matchup between the Chicago Bears and the New Orleans Saints. Chicago is coming off a dismal loss against the Rams on Monday Night Football this past week. They did not look good. Nick Foles looks awful. Um, I hear chants of Trubix, Trubixi. Uh, I can't say that. <laughs> Trubixi uh, coming, <laughs> coming back. So, uh, you know what? If, I, if he's not good enough and I can't say his name right, then he's not good enough to be on the field, and that's how bad the people are chanting his name. Uh, Nick Foles has just been awful. This guy, he is... Something else. Um, he won a Super Bowl. He was an MVP in the Super Bowl. And, you know, he just uh, has been with his fifth team now. And he just can't get it together ever since he won a Super Bowl. So we'll see how things go against the Saints. The Saints are banged up on offense. You have uh, Callaway, and I'm sorry, not Callaway. You have Thomas, and you have. Um, uh, no, Callaway's out, and Thomas is out. Two wide receivers. And that's just not going to be good for Breeze. But on the flip side, Breeze is working with Traquan Smith um, and just all of his other wide receivers. He's just such a great quarterback. Any wide receiver that steps in, he's been making them look good. On the flip side, the Bears, uh, they're not showing signs of offense right now. Uh, Foles is throwing interceptions. He's just not moving the offense. 
and some injuries on their defensive side. You have um, Khalil Mack, who is probably not going to play, and if he doesn't go, that just opens up more opportunities for the Saints to run the ball with Kamara um, and Latavius Murray. So this game's going to be a little interesting. Um, we kind of gave you a weird overview of what's going to go on, but Really what it comes down to is, is there going to be offense in this game? And I think that Drew Brees is going to be able to throw the ball, and with Kamara rushing, he'll have good play action that will allow them to score some points. On the flip side, Foles, his back's against the wall. If he does not come through this week, um, I think he's going to be benched for Trubisky. There it is. Said it correctly. And he is going to just get pulled probably at halftime if, if – They've only put up three, 10 points maybe, and he's like 11 for 22 at that point. He's just not going to be uh, the quarterback of the future. I don't think Trubisky is going to be the quarterback of the future, um, but they got to do something. Now, with that said, I think there will be a quarterback change, and I think the second half the Bears are going to come out strong the same way they did against the Falcons when Foles replaced Trubisky um, back in, I believe that was week number three. So, long story short... There's going to be points in this game, and the Chicago Bears and the New Orleans Saints are going to go over 43 and a half. That is such a low line for those Saints. Those guys can put up points in a heartbeat. Jerry Cook, Callaway, Traquan Smith, all those guys, Emmanuel Sanders, they can put up points, and Drew Brees is going to be airing it out against them. So again, Bears, Saints, over 43 and a half. Lastly, the Cowboys-Eagles Sunday night. I don't know why the Cowboys continue to get on our top five plays each week, especially Dak Prescott's out, Andy Dalton is more than likely out, and they're going to be starting a kid named Ben DiNucci. Who? Ben DiNucci is from James Madison. Yeah, the awesome school of James Madison. Now, he did take them to an FCS championship game a couple years back. He was a seventh-round draft pick. Um, the Cowboys look awful. They lost to the Washington football team last week, who has a worse record, or now they're the same as them. Football, Washington football team is just is, is so abysmal, it's not even funny, and they lost. They lost by 20 points to these guys. We know because we picked the Cowboys to win, and it didn't go well for us. Um, you have the two injuries of Dalton and Prescott that are looming, making Ben DiNucci your starting quarterback most likely for Sunday. Um, on the flip side, Philly, they came off a 23-22 win against the Giants. They had to have a 12-point comeback in the last uh, five minutes of that game. Carson Wentz threw over 340 yards uh, in that matchup, and he is coming on a little bit stronger. They are 2-4-1, and one, though. They're not fantastic. Uh, that division has been called NF NFC Least. Um, instead of NFC East, because that's just how bad everybody in that division's been. Um, but the, the, the thing is, with new quarterbacks, the defenses really haven't seen tape. And Ben DiNucci, he's going to throw it. He's going to air it out. If you remember Stidman back in the day with the Patriots when he first came out, he actually would get you know two, three touchdowns in his first couple games because nobody had tape on this guy. And I don't think the Eagles... Defense is strong enough to stop this guy from getting a couple touchdowns in the game. On the flip side, the Cowboys' defense is awful. I could go out there, throw for 400 yards and two touchdowns, and be fine. So I trust Carson Wentz to have a better game than myself. And that's going to lead to a lot of points. And again, like the trend on, the, on this video is going, the overs are very, very low at 43. And we recommend taking Cowboys-Eagles over 43 points. And uh, that's going to do it for week five. Just a, a short recap. We have the Packers minus six at Lambeau. The Patriots bills over 41. We like the Lions money line straight up against Phillip Rivers and that suspect defense. Uh, the Bears and the Saints over 43 and a half. And finally, Sunday Night Football. Put it on there. Cowboys, Eagles. There's going to be some points. Over 43. And that's our five best plays for week number eight. As always, relax, eat some chips, order some pizza, and let us do the work while you do the winning.